The Boston Sauce Party at the Brickyard is tonight right here in the TNR Truck Series where we are going to have some of the best race around this 2.5 mile uh, oval right in the heart of Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm Joshua Copperall. I'm joined by Brett Bennett. Brett, how you doing? I am doing well. Happy to be here on Monday night. Getting the week started with some action here at the racing capital of the world. Great track. I really enjoy it. Uh, I know some people it's not their favorite, but very much a draft dependent track in these trucks with the long straightaways into into the lower speed kind of flat corners. So going to be really interesting to watch here tonight. Yeah, we have not, as far as I'm aware, I don't know if we've ever had a truck race here at Indy on JCTV before. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I don't think we have. I mean, we've not had too many races at the Indy Oval on JCTV anyway, just because, you know, either no leagues really want to come to Indianapolis or, um, you know, the Oval really has been just kind of forgotten about in the NASCAR world uh, for the longest time. Of course, um, we did have a Indianapolis Oval race not too long ago. Uh, and yeah, the coast, 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 yeah. yeah. but uh, That's some drama in that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's not stuff we see too often. I personally, I'm really excited. I, I really do like this track a lot, and I think I really like it because of the history that is behind this track. This this track has oh, I don't know the exact year. What? Oh, 1909. So when this track opened, yep. there's 1909 over a hundred years of history here, and it it's it's just awesome. I mean, in real life, it's, I will say, from a spectator experience, having been here in real life, the viewing angles are the worst of any track in the country that's an oval. But the atmosphere, like, I've been coming for the Indy 500 the last two, three years. Going to do it again this year. The atmosphere for the Indy 500 is like nothing else here. It's just an awesome facility, world-class facility, really. And just, yeah, as you said, the history here, so much historic motorsports events have occurred here. As right now we're getting qualifying underway here at the racing capital of the world, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Bill Edwards is going to be the first one out on track, it appears. So, go ahead and take a look at Bill Edwards. Currently, the air temp is 66 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a nice, cool day. Well, not really cool, but not too hot either. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd love to be outside in this weather right now. Uh, track temp, 86 degrees Fahrenheit, so pretty cool track temp. Uh, wind blowing 16 miles per hour north. So drivers, they're going to have a headwind down the back straightaway. Uh, tailwind heading on the front straightaway. Which uh, I, I don't think drivers are going to mind too much because that'll, that'll pick up speed going down uh, straightaway where the start finish line is at. So Bill Edwards is across the line. So this lap is going to be his first. That'll count. And I believe everybody is out on track. Well, no, nope, three drivers still in the pits. You want to get out fairly quickly because long lap times here. You want to get two laps. You really need to get out early. Yeah, this, this track, like I said, two and a half miles long. It's it does take quite a while to get around this track. So we're gonna see here, Bill Edwards lap one is a fifty-two point zero three three. Just eight seconds shy of a minute around here. Right now, Matt Muir goes quickest, a 51.606 on his first lap. I believe Matt. I 
is not going to take a second lap. Oh, he's back in the pits. Yeah, probably liked what he got on the first lap and decided that was going to be it. Bill Edwards, 51, 838P3. Eight, eight, Another important note tonight, points leader James Lorello appears to have not made it to the session here tonight. So big opportunity for Michael Kruger, Philip Scott, and Bronson Stafford of all possible to take the points lead. But Michael Kruger, 51, 719. Bob Giaquinto, P4, 51.931. Gets an improved second lap there. Thompson Stafford, 51.677, P2. Jeffrey Armistead, 51.854. That puts him fifth fastest. Chris now. Currently P9. Not an improvement. Mar Dumas did not report a time on his first lap. 51, 8, 5, P5 for Dumas. Jonathan Gaston out there. He's going to probably get this one lap in. Session late was not able to record a lap time, and Trevor Burns never went out to record a lap. That is going to do it for qualifying. This time is out. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our starting grid. I'll go through the first five. I'll pass things over to Brett. Zero one. It's going to be Matt Muir, Ronson Stafford. Michael Kruger, Bill Edwards, row two. And Jamar Dumas starts fifth. Starting sixth is going to be Jeffrey Armistead. Bob Giaquinto and Garrett Gleason will be on row four. Row five, Philip Scott and Chris Nenow. And row six, Jonathan Gaston, Billy Valvano. Billy. Vinny Valvano. Mike Tellier, Trip Burns make up row seven. And uh, Jason Shoes starting in 15th. So, getting ready. 60 laps here around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Uh, sounds like 20 laps is the fuel window tonight. So, it's going to be real tight, <laughs> but you're going to have to make two pit stops regardless. And something to look for tonight with that is, I think we're going to see people possibly try to short. You can pit here without losing a lap, so possibility to pull some strategy and maybe catch a caution too. Is now rolling. Boston Sauce Party at the Brickyard. Boston Sauce Party is Saturday, April 27th, Sunday, April 28th at the Harpoon Brewer, hey, 90, Brewer Brewing in Boston, 90. Massachusetts. Sample for the best hot sauces. Kind of more than 20 of the best hot sauce makers in the country. 
Tickets going fast. Get them now. BostonSauceParty.com. And, uh... Let me do something real quick before... You better hurry. Go green. <laughs> yes, I know. There we go. Brotson Stafford. <laughs> Pace car's off. We're good. Yep. Pace car is off. And... Green flag is out. We're underway here at Indianapolis. Good launch for Bronson on the outside. Really good launch. He might take the lead here coming out of turn two. Up a little track, a little bit too high. Spear stays underneath, but the draft help from Bill Edwards. To Stafford. Gonna help Stafford. We got a truck in the grass. Excuse me, in the grass in the back. That was uh, Jonathan Gaston. Able to keep it together. Still side by side for P2. Edwards in here. Oh, wow. Oh, Edwards got the wall a little bit there off of turn four. Yeah, he did. He's pushing. And Kruger. Gonna push Mir. Thought he might try to take it four wide there. Three wide there. Thought better of it. Thought he let move here. Up to go three wide in the corner. It's Kruger now to the outside of Matt Mir. See what he can do. Kruger is going to get clear. So now it is a single file train. Somebody else in the wall. Uh, Mike Tellier. Jeremy Burns looks to the inside of Tellier. Michael Kruger wasting no time as he's looking to the inside of Bill Edwards trying to take that second place away. And Kruger is going to complete the pass. Bill Edwards maybe though, not. putting up a great fight. Yeah, maybe not. Edwards... He had a moment off corner exit, pushing hard, trying to stay right there in the right rear of uh, Kruger. They are now clear. Almost some conduct there. Kruger kind of made it look like he overshot the corner a little bit. That's all that was going on. Jamar Jones was able to get by Bob to the window of the fifth spot. Armstead right there back in uh, seventh. Martin Lewis kind of had to slip up off the board. That's going to be a good back by him for the fifth spot. Edward looks back inside of Mike. Mike. The Kruger going to hold on to the position. Dumas looking to the inside of uh, Chia Quinto. Yeah, these two drivers continue swapping positions back and forth. I think. Dumas got the, uh, just below the, uh, white line there, which might have bottomed him out. You can kind of put tires down there sometimes. I think I'm going to be a 
take the road here. Gee, went a good run. Thought about move on near there. That felt better up here. Stay where he's at. Bill Edwards kind of washing up the track just a little bit. Not enough to open up the door for a vent here. This track, I mean, as you can see, it is, you know, flat. Uh, but, correct me if I'm wrong, 9 degrees banking in the corners. It's, uh... You know, it's not much, but it's still, it, it, it is a lot uh, compared to, uh, you know, some other tracks. I mean, 9 degrees, it, it does help a lot. Yeah, it does really help rotate the car a little bit. At the same time, though, you almost want to have those two left side tires almost down on that rumble strip on the inside. You don't want to touch the grass. You can really put those left side tires below the white line. We're seeing a lot of people do it right on or just putting those tires just below it right now. Drivers like to keep settling in early. Kind of safe tires. Difficult track to pass at with the graph. Especially if it's a lot of tracks you have multiple grooves. Here, usually it's kind of that bottom groove. It's hard to make the top really work for you. Yeah, you're, you're not going to have the top really work here. There's Jeffrey Armstead. He's at Jamar. He's going to get by him for the sixth spot. Great pass there for Armstead. He got the run off the corner and just drove down the inside, down the straightaway, and then drove in a little deep. He just kind of just lifted out, let him have the spot. And it's kind of a classic way that you want to pass here. This track, I mean, you've got these long straightaways and two short shoots. Uh, you want to be able to set the pass up off of either turn two or turn four. Uh, you, yeah. you really don't want to try to spend your time trying to pass in turn two or turn four because, you know, you've got those long straightaways that really can hurt your run. And any attempt at a pass that you uh, could have could be just, you know, out the window there. Jeffrey Armstead did a great job down the back straightaway getting into three to make that pass happen. We've already seen some pretty significant fall off. Leaders have dropped off about eight tenths from their fastest lap early in the race. As Mirror going to drive around, I don't know, maybe Bill Edwards cut the wall there or something, but Mirror able to pick that first spot. Edwards didn't catch the wall, but he almost caught the wall, had the feather it on exit, and that let Mir get that big run. So move the pole to the map near back up third. Yeah, I was able to start on the pole, just did not have a great opening run that he would have wanted to have had. Philip Scott making a pass. And Tamara Dumas. No, I'm going to set spot. Another driver, uh, Derek Gleason, just caught the wall, dropped him back from ninth all the way back to 12. And Trevor Burns didn't move around Vinny Balbano for ninth. Burns 
started uh, 14th, of course, after not qualifying. So worked his way up to ninth so far. Great job by Burns, picking him off. guys from third to uh, seventh. They're all just nose to tail. Yeah, they've been that way for a while. Philip Scott's kind of they did it now, but they've been pretty consistent, all of them consistent in separation. From, by the way, Michael Kluger had been closing in on Bronson staff a little bit the last couple laps, stacked to about 10 foot per lap. Yeah, and I, I have been watching lap times, and uh, it seems like the fastest laps come in uh, from mid pack. Well, this last few laps, it has been coming out of Bronson Stafford. We were on first spot on pit road. Garrett Gleason had dropped all the way back to like 12 or 13 these sides to pull it down pit road. Yeah, and of course, you did mention he did hit the wall. Car not handling the way it is. I'm thinking he probably had used up his tires a little bit. And he's going to take service here. Lap 12, a little bit early, but probably I don't know exactly what the fuel window is. Maybe if you can go more than 20 laps, might be it's a strategy call or... And curious to me is he is off pit road now, 14.9 second stop for Derek Gleason. I have been told it is 20 laps. And it's going to be real hard to save here. Um, I, it is possible, but it is going to be hard. And Gleason actually will lose a lap here. He's going to rejoin kind of in the middle of the pack because they, they do have to run that access road in one and two. I've been on an iRacing so long, I remember when you didn't have to run the access road. You just pull back onto the track, right out of pit road. I, if I remember right, it depends what version of this track you're using, um, the oval or the Indy oval. I believe the Indy oval, you don't have to pull straight, you pull straight out, or vice versa. I could have swore, and I, I could be very wrong on this, but I could have sworn that both versions were like that. Pretty much almost every track now has an access road or, or the apron that you've got to run and tell the back straight away where you can like it might be pit entry then because i know there's di uh, like that the difference between the nascar and the indy oval at indianapolis is something with pit, with where the pit entry is and i do actually remember a time when you had to run the uh, entire access road at every track uh, every oval to get into pits. You couldn't just pull off on the front straightaway. Um, a lot of people complained about that one. They finally took it away. Um, but yes, I do believe you are correct on that. I do believe it is the uh, Indy version that makes you run the uh, well, uh, access I road. Checked, I just checked and at least the track map shows the exact same for the open wheel oval and the NASCAR oval. So I don't know what the difference is between two. So. Restart zone, maybe, but the the uh, there's a updated ver there's only one updated version of it. The old ones were all from 2009, so unclear. Uh, Jeffrey Armstead look into the inside of Bob G. Quinto for a fifth. Armstead's been doing a great job too. Just staying patient, picking them off one by one when he gets the opportunity. The long long race. I mean, it is 60 laps. But it's still a long race. And uh, wasn't able to complete the pass there. Yeah, Gia Quinto managed to hold on the other side. It's going to be Philip Scott possibly a chance. Oh, Gia oh, Quinto hard the into wall. the wall. He's going to lose a couple of them. And now Philip Scott looking to the inside of Jeffrey Armistead. For the fifth spot, and he's going to get it.
Also, Bill Edwards is down back by Matt Muir for the third spot. Chris now now looking at the inside of Mike Kelly here, looking for the 11th position, and he's looks like he's going to get it in turn three. Eston also try to, trying to get around Tellier. Philip Scott now looking to get by Matt Muir. He's going to move himself up in the fourth spot. Philip Scott been steadily moving forward. Started all the way back in ninth. Now up to fourth. This is Jamar Dinas able to get by Bob Giacunto. Scott has been impressive. To uh, be on track with him and uh, what, you know, whether I was on the track as a racer, whether I was spotting for Michael Kruger, or to be up here in the booth. Watching Scott is impressive. Right now, closest battle, Jamar Dean with Bob Giaquinto and Traver Burns are all under a blanket for the seventh spot. Traver Burns all over that bumper Giaquinto off turn four. Jim Burns looking at the inside. And there goes Garrett Gleason. He's on fresher tires. Burns will they really complete the pass. Giaquinto went way wide. Yeah, it looked like he missed the corner there. That's Jeffrey Armistead now looking to do up in the top five. Looking under Matt Muir in the turn three. And he's going to clear him easily. We are coming around complete 19 laps. Bill Edwards going to come down pit road. As is Philip Scott. And Trevor Burns. That's interesting because... Might be tough to make it on one stop from here. A few drivers coming in. Yeah, Jonathan Gaston and Jason Chu in as well. I'm very curious to know how this is going to play out. You know, I, I can confidently say that uh, I think Taking this extra lap is, is really going to help drivers like uh, Bronson Stafford, Michael Kruger, Jeffrey Armistead. Let's see. Uh, Kruger going to stay out, actually. Stafford coming in pit road. That's interesting. Uh... Only three Jeffrey takers. Armistead also staying out. Yeah, only three takers this time. Stafford, Muir, and me now. So Kruger must have been doing a great job at saving some fuel. And this is only going to help him. Uh, as well as uh, Jeffrey Armistead. Jamar Dumas. Bob G. Quinto. Vinny Valvano. Mike Tellier also staying out. I, I feel like they, they're going to have to hit this time, though. Bronson had a little bit of a slower stop, on probably a second or so longer than some of the cars behind him. Probably going to still, probably looks like he's going to keep the lead up with Bill Edwards pretty quickly. There's to see, though, Michael Kruger now on the pit road. And what a pit yeah. entry by Kruger. Yes, everybody has come down pit road. Yeah, he uh, got all he could get there on pit entry. <laughs> And that's the thing about Indianapolis, it's kind of deceptive. The pit speed line is well past the wall. So oh, overshot down. his box, though. Oh. <laughs> he is off and away. And Stafford easily going to get ahead of Michael Crew there. Overall, an extra second on pit lane. Probably got gains time on the entry, but lost it on getting into his box there. Phil Edwards also going to get by 
other difference here is that lap offset on tires. Michael Kruger going to drop back to the fourth spot. I'm so curious to know. I mean, Kruger nailed the pit entry. And, uh, you know, with the tire offset by about a lap, I still want to know how this is going to play out for Kruger compared to the, these uh, other guys that came in a uh, lap or two beforehand. And uh, you were saying earlier about possibly this truck being a difficult truck to fuel save at. I actually think this is a track you can really save a lot of fuel at. Um, if you just lift a little earlier into the corner, possibly clutch in, you can really save a lot of fuel and kind of just roll in a little more after the brake. Um, that can really save you a lot of fuel, so it might be something worth watching as Matt Nurgis, by the way, set the fastest lap of the race. He's coming back at six now. Uh, Traver Burns is hitting earlier as the club tips up to fifth. At least we see, though, if that one lap tire offset that Kruger's got on Stafford and others is going to pay off. I it really huge difference made by people who stayed out an extra lap or two compared to the people who pitted earlier. It's gonna be interesting to see how this cycle through. I'm I'm really curious. You know, some people may really not like long runs. It's it's, it's boring. There's no action happening. But you know, I love them. Just, there's so much unknown strategies that happen, you know, coming down a couple laps sooner than somebody else could make the difference between winning and losing. Kruger uh, is closing in on Philip Scott, and that will be for third. And now Jamar Dumas closing in on Jonathan Gasser tonight. And Jeffrey Armistead closing in on Matt Muir for the sixth spot. Dumas just ran the fastest lap of the race, 52-0-35. And Jeffrey Armistead now, a 52-0-32. That's the best lap of the race. As Dumas can improve Jonathan Gaston and he left himself up to the ninth spot. Jeffrey Armistead, right now in the wake of Matt Muir. Something just happened with Trevor Burns. I think. Is he a little slow there? I'm not sure. I didn't really. I just looked about the replay. I didn't really see anything obvious. Yeah, pretty normal lap time that lap. I'm not sure. Uh, Crazy. Who knows? Michael Kruger's caught up to Philip Scott now. Well, Kruger have a great entry in a three here, possibly. Uh, he cop. He. Probably didn't do it right. He was too impatient. He tried to pinch down on an exit of two and compromise his run down the straightaway. You gotta focus on the exit of four. You can't try to get the run on the exit. You gotta try. You can't try to get under him on exit. You gotta just wait and get the launch off and pass him straight away. Uh, Vinny Valvano's got him by Garrett Gleason, the 14th, by the way. Still, all over. He's not quite a run on the four. And these guys actually are catching Bill Edwards. So pretty soon, this battle will be for second.
Now Philip Scott. He's going to look to the inside of Edwards. Where it's close to the door. Kruger finds Scott the door. Lost the, Scott lost the nose a little bit there behind Edwards, and that let Kruger get through on the inside. A little bit of an arrow push there for Scott. Move Mike Kruger up to third. Get by these guys quickly. Try to start closing in on Bronson Stafford. Five seconds is the gap between Stafford and Edwards. behind Edwards now gonna peek to the inside we're gonna complete the pass out of four yeah the last kid passed but while they were battling that let Bronson pick up another quarter of a second on them 5.2 the margin down to five point about five still not paying around five or seconds Bronson two kids fashion through the last time by behind that near. Bronson Sapper just crosses the line halfway through the Boston Sauce Party at Brickyard. Uh, Boston Sauce Party is Saturday, April 27th and Sunday, April 28th. That is not this upcoming weekend. That is next weekend. Uh, the Harpoon Brewer Brewing, Harpoon Brewing in Boston, Massachusetts. Sample and bring home the best hot sauces for more than 20 of the best hot sauce makers in the country. Tickets are going fast. Get them now at bostonsauceparty.com. Further back in the field, Jeffrey Armistead's got in by Matt Muir now for the uh, sixth position as Garrett Gleason back on pit road for his second stop. Philip Scott unable to uh, try to make this pass on Bill Edwards. Scott Kruger caught up to Bill Edwards pretty quickly. Ever since then, Scott just not able to get right there to the tailgate of Bill Edwards. Yeah, and right now out front by the way, Boston Stafford is doing a really good job uh, managing the gap. He's not pushing more than he has to. I think he's in a really good shape right now. Um, as long as he doesn't make any major mistakes, uh, it's going to be really hard for somebody to catch up to him. Yeah, he's been the fastest truck on track last few laps. Doing an incredible job. Bronson Stafford definitely looks like the guy to beat so far in this race. And he's got a big enough lead where if fuel is tight, he can manage it pretty easily. Um, give up a little bit of time to manage that fuel. So 
probably not going to be a problem for that A61 truck. Last time by, fastest truck on track was the uh, six or fourteen of Jeffrey Hunter's so six. I think I'm bored with Brown's and Stafford. That's not sound like he's saving out there. Yeah, and his lead is enough where probably if he's able to do 20 in the game, he'll be fine. I mean, while Jeffrey Armistead to the inside of Traber Burns and move Jeffrey Armistead back into the top five. Thing I could maybe think of. I don't know what the numbers are like here. Or if Mikey would consider it. I don't know what the tire wear is like, but I'm wondering if maybe Mikey considers two tires here. Because if the lefts aren't wearing a huge amount, you might be able to gain a good bit of that time back on Bronson Stafford, maybe even jump them. Or I'm also wondering if Mike Henry tries to come a lap earlier and maybe come around lap seems, It seems like he could make it well on that first one. Maybe he comes on lap 39. I don't know. I, I mean, it is hard to tell. I think with the track state, uh, or, you know, the wear of the track, It is bumpy. It is uh, not an old surface, but it's definitely not new. It's been a long time since I've raced here on the oval, but I, I think uh, I would personally think that tire wear might be uh, a difference. Right now, battle coming up for the bulk spot. Spot. Bob Giaquinto under attack from Mike Tellier. And Bob is going to let Tellier through. That's going to throw Tellier up to the 11th spot. Gee, Quinto is looking really solid early. Seems like he's kind of lost the handle as this race has gone on. Not Jeffrey Armstead. Go ahead with what you were going to say. Uh, I don't know what happened. But Michael Kruger ran like eight tenths down lap time last lap. I'm not sure what happened. He actually got the wall out of out of turn one. Maybe a little bit of damage too to that 41 truck. So not good for Michael Kruger. Is Bill Edwards starting to close in on him? Jeffrey, Ar I'm just saying Jeffrey Armstead was four tenths quicker than the entire field last lap. And he has almost caught Philip Scott. Dr. Gaston on pit road. That's interesting. He's one of those people who pitted on lap 19, I believe. Actually, I believe he pitted lap uh... Yeah, I think lap nine. But yeah, uh, you mentioned about Jumper Armistead being fast, about the fastest truck on track. And I was going to say, how about him? He's doing a great job. Armistead, you know, he's... I think he's a driver that really goes under the radar uh, on a lot of people. Um, at, at tracks that aren't Daytona, Talladega, and, and now Atlanta. Um, but Armistead, you know, I, I feel like this 
just kind of really he's suits a, him, the long runs. He's always been really, really consistent and fast on long runs. He does a great job taking care of his uh, tires. Uh, he's on probably the oldest wheel in the series. Yeah. So, uh, um, and, and <laughs> that's not a joke either. He is on a steering wheel that is as old as me. Legitimately. A Microsoft Sidewinder from 1999, I believe. I thought it was 98. But if it is 99, so not as old as me. But almost. About the same age as both of us. Yeah, that's, that's insane. I mean, that wheel is probably in much better shape than I am. Philip Scott coming down Pit Road. As well as Traver Burns. Lap 39. That's going to be tight whether they can make it from here. I'd expect to see Bronson Stafford coming down pit road this time. That little bit of wall contact has kind of been fading a little bit. Sure enough, here comes Bronson Stafford on the pit road. Curious to know what Kruger does. He stays out. Bill Edwards coming down pit road. Jeffrey Armistead as well. Matt Muir. Christine now stays out. Javar Dumas coming down pit road. Michael Kruger back with the race lead for now. Like tell your exit pit road. Go ahead. The Jeffrey Armistead also came down there with him. Jeffrey Armistead. Oh, pit road. Ahead, Bill Edwards. And I wouldn't speak too soon here. Edwards and Scott are going to be coming down the back stretch here, maybe with Run, but actually, yeah, it looks like he's going to get out in front of him at least. If he can stay in front of Bill Scott, that's huge for him. Still seven seconds behind Bronson Stafford. Philip Scott going to look to his inside, though, into three. Jeffrey just went on pit road. Nothing to do to pin that. As Michael Kruger now on pit road. Here's Bronson Stafford at the line. Kruger still in his box. Now Kruger pulling away. We're going to get passed by both Scott and Jeffrey and Armistead as well. As well as Bill Edwards, Michael Hooger back to fifth. We saw this before. And what's interesting, I believe Hooger versus Scott is going to be the battle for the points lead. Stafford might have it, but he was sitting a deep couple points back of them, so if Kruger can get back up and buy Scott, he'll probably take over the points lead here tonight. Um, Scott, can, Scott can hold on the second, though. I believe he will, but Jeffrey Armistead right now all over his back bumper. This is only Jeffrey Armistead's second start. Um, race last week for half a lap. Ran around the track the rest of the race. But second start uh, here in TNR, but you know he's he's not a rookie. He knows what he's doing. Jeff Armstead, multiple wins on JCTV. Great racer. Pretty cool guy too. 
Yeah. But he is not the uh, Season 5 Mid-Season Madness Champion in the Oh, series. here we go. It's the Truck Series. <laughs> nah, Jeffrey's, Jeffrey's a really good driver. I enjoy racing with him. A teammate in most leagues. So, always happy seeing him doing well. He's Any race like this where it goes green like this, he's going to be somebody to contend with. It looks like possibly Philip Scott is going to him, but I would not be surprised if he starts crawling, cutting into that lead. He's really seemed to have the best car on the on the longer runs. Probably not enough time for him to get up to Bronson Stafford, but I would like to note, though, around the top, the last stint, he was almost 10 seconds back at one point. He's now only 7 seconds back at Bronson Stafford, despite them hitting on the same lap, so he's been probably faster than Bronson Stafford for the second half of this race and I'm wondering he he missed he was not he joined the session with only about five minutes left I don't think he got the, I think he got to run one practice lap and that was it I wonder if maybe it's been kind of he had to learn the track a little bit and now that he's learned it he, somebody might be able to get up there if we were to get a late race caution maybe have a chance at it Bill Edwards is well his back on for right now as well I'm not fooled by, you know, the fact that Bill Edwards running all over the back tailgate of Jeffrey Armistead or Jeffrey Armistead, just, you know, where he's at. And I mean that in a way of Jeffrey Armistead, he really comes to life towards the end of a run. And it's still early in this, uh, in this cycle of tires. Uh, Jeff, the other thing is Jeffrey's just waiting. The other thing to note is Philip Scott's got to go 21 laps, and he has not gone 21 laps on a tank of fuel yet. So, I'm wondering if he is even Scott's going to save fuel in this run, or maybe he's good. Who knows? Hey, what? I, I have no idea uh, what I would do. When I race, I've got something to tell me when to pit, so... Uh... <laughs> you know, but, uh... I can't, I can't exactly see how, how many laps these guys are, you know, have. It's, it's all just a guessing game for us in the booth. You know, we know it's 20 laps. We see when they pit. You know, and it's yeah, not like it's just 20 and you're out. You can stretch it. We've been proved. Uh, that you can do that by Michael Kruger, um, you know, but it's it's really about saving the fuel. Yeah, the two people who I know for sure are maybe not good are Philip Scott and Traber Burns. So it's going to see if they have enough. Also, Philip Scott, and Jeffrey Armistead, Phil Edwards, and Michael Kruger all running four or five tenths faster than Bronson Stafford right now. I don't know if that Stafford just backing it off a little bit. I'm surprised that that's the case. He's got a big lead. He doesn't need to push at all. Actually, I just looked. Stafford appears to have some right side damage. And actually, I just want to look back. He actually hit the wall the lap before he hit it, I believe. Lap 39. Oh, yeah, he slammed the wall off of turn four on lap 39. Big contact, and I wonder if that's hurting Stafford as everybody behind him is gaining on him pretty quick, about three or four tenths a lap right now. I don't think they're going to have enough time to get there, but it's right now Bill Edwards, Michael Kruger, Jeffrey Armistead all battling for third. Kind of interesting. Uh, when you have such a big lead and nothing's happening around you, uh, cameras don't point to you. We don't talk about you. So, you know, it's, it's things that we can miss, um, like that damage to Stafford. As I said, that last lap, he went four tenths faster than this entire pack as this whole pack's battling with each other. And, you know, and the other thing I can think of is if that damage is not really affecting him, uh, much. 
Uh, because, I mean, it doesn't look all that bad, but iRacing physics can be screwy at times, and um, this is a big track, so aerodynamics really do matter. You know, the other thing I'm thinking of is, is he just saving a little bit of fuel? You know, like, I mean, again, you've mentioned how he has such a huge lead that he very well could be just saving some fuel. Not really concerned about anything, and while these guys are trying to catch him, you know, if they do get to him, maybe he's got a little bit of tire life left and the fuel to be able to battle a little bit. He's coming up on the lap car on Jason's shoe to put him a lap down as well. And who knows how the dirty air is going to affect that 61. I think Philip Scott is kind of checking up this lead pack. Jeffrey's able to get a good run out of the corners, but just hasn't been able to quite able to get side by side. Yeah, Scott breaking the draft on the straightaways. That's what he's doing when he's pulling down. You see them all just going down in a line, going back up to the wall. That's uh, that's Scott trying to break the draft, not allow uh, Armistead to get the, the run. He's there now. Uh, yeah, he got there, and now here's Bill Edwards, three wide. They are still three wide. Bill Edwards, Kruger, Scott. Kruger going to get past both Edwards and Scott. But Kruger, P3. Jeffrey Armstead, P2. And now the two trucks who were running the fastest out of that group, now in front of it. Start to make a charge leader. They were all six tenths faster the lap before. I don't think they'll be quicker this lap because of yeah, the battling. They run actually same speed as uh, Stafford that time by. They're going to, I don't know, if you get to them, they're going to have to gain almost just under a second a lap. So I don't think they're going to be able to get there. But just to see if they can find something at least to and put a lap down. Probably not going to be any more lap traffic for our race leader to continue to tonight. Yeah, I'd be very surprised if uh, Stafford does running it into any more. Stafford and at the start finish line. The next truck you get to, Vinny Belvano, just exiting two. two. And one other note, and I don't think it's going to come down to this, but. And Jeffrey Armistead was 8 tenths faster that last lap, now only 5 seconds back. If he keeps catching at this pace, um, do the math. If he keeps catching at this pace, I believe he's going to catch him. And the other thing to note about Stafford is if he has damage, that can affect your fuel mileage. Like obviously, we can't see in the car, but when you have that right side damage, it can catch, it can cause you to burn more fuel on the straightaways. So it's possible that could be affecting Bronson right now. This Bronson picked up a little bit that lap. Honestly, only able to gain three tenths. If he, that's not going to be enough. He's got to go more than that a lap. 4.7 a lap. Right now, Bill Edwards all over Michael Kruger. Yeah, Edwards trying to get the position back. They go side by side down the back stretch. Kruger hanging tough on that outside line. He is going to keep the position ahead of Edwards. That's what I'm talking about, you know, when I mentioned earlier, you don't want to try to complete a pass off of two or four, but rather set up the pass in two and out of two and four. Armistead, five tenths faster that lap. 4.1 now the margin. 
He's definitely faster than Safford. The question is, does he have enough time? Six laps to go. About five and a half at this point. Gap is 4.2. It's going to be real tough. Yeah, he's going to... The, the only other thing, though, is we don't know for certain if Stafford is good on fuel. Jeffrey's got a better fuel mileage. We saw in that first stint, so... And that damage on Stafford's car, if it's hurting his fuel mileage at all. Right now, Jason Shu actually, the lap car behind him, is actually kind of gaining back up on Stafford. Five to go. And that time by Jeffrey's only able to gain two tenths of a second. Maybe tires starting to fade on that 14. Saturday, April 27th, Sunday, April 28th, Harpoon Brewing in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the uh, Boston Sauce Party. Sample to bring home the best hot sauces from more than 20 of the best hot sauce makers in the country. Tickets go fast. Remember now, bostonsauceparty.com. Four point one seconds is the gap. Yeah, Jeffrey's just not making the ground he was able to make earlier. Only able to get a tenth that lap, although. Four to go. Oh, Bill Edwards just got on the wall pretty hard right behind Michael Kruger. And I just went to Bronson's onboard. It doesn't look like he's saving fuel right now. I'm thinking he's probably thinking he's good. Either thinking he's good or praying for chaos here. He's coming three laps to go. 3.6 seconds of the gap. Definitely not enough time for Armistead to catch uh, Stafford with the uh, lap times they are currently running. Big difference, though. I mean, Armistead 53.9. 54.3 out of Stafford. He's more than a second a lap at this point, but still a huge chunk taken out. to be two laps to go here at the line. Stafford still holding on. You have a battle on track between Trevor Burns and Jamar Dumas. is for 7th. Jameis going to look to the inside, heading into 3. Will be side by side. Jameis completes the pass. But on the first straightaway, white flag is waving. Bronson Stafford one more lap. Does he have the fuel? If he doesn't, he's made a terrible error by not saving, so <laughs> I'm thinking he does. I would say he is definitely good to go. gap just under three seconds 
But it doesn't matter. Off turn four. He did not pull a J.R. Hildebrand. Checkered flag. Bronson Stafford, your race winner here. The Boston Sauce Party at the Brickyard. And Jeffrey Armistead, P2. Great job out of Jeffrey Armistead tonight. We're bringing it home on podium as well. Stafford. He is completing his cool down lap. And I believe with the order of finish tonight, I believe. If I'm remembering the point system correctly, Michael Kruger will retake the points lead, although Bronson staff are going to be just behind him. Actually, my map might run. I believe Bronson Stafford might have taken the points lead by one point over Michael Kruger. But I don't have that official yet. The unofficial race results. Bronson Stafford taking the race win. Jeffrey Armstead, 2.5 seconds behind. Finishes second. Michael Kruger, P3. Bill Edwards, fourth. Philip Scott, fifth. Christine Al, sixth. Jamar Dumas, seventh. Trevor Burns finishes eighth. Matt Muir finishes ninth. Mike Tellier, he brings home the 10th place finish. Yeah, and rounding out your field, Bob G. Quinto comes from 11th. He, had, he looked strong early, but unfortunately faded over the course of the race. Jonathan Gaston, 12th. Vinny Valvano, 13th. Jason Shu, 14th, one lap down. And our only DNF of the night, Garrett Gleason, called it a night with 11 to go. He comes home 15th. Let's go ahead and talk to our podium drivers. Michael Kruger, third place finish tonight. You uh, pretty fast out there, but a uh, little bit of a different strategy compared to everybody else. Um, how was it out there? Yeah, uh, I mean, honestly, I thought tonight was pretty sloppy, really, of a performance. I mean, even though it was a third, I thought it was pretty sloppy. I mean, I knocked the wall down like three times and basically damaged my car for 12 and a half seconds and completely took away my arrow. It's probably one of the worst places you could get arrow damage. So, pretty much long game what I did. Feel strategy wise, it's just kind of. Just wait later than some to pit so I can not have to worry about fuel and just push. So I just saved a little early in the first run and then just from there just kind of push both runs. And yeah, I mean, I mean, I had to play catch up pretty much after the, my first pit stop and my second pit stop when I blew through my box because I'm a freaking Einstein and I'm the best pit pit guy ever because I don't know how to correctly get onto pit road in my box and out of my box fast enough while I managed to lose like five seconds some just yeah no you uh 
And I was going to ask you about that. I mean, your entry into Pit Road uh, was incredible um, tonight. But uh, just the mistakes on Pit Road kind of set you back. Um, and uh, you had to battle a little bit. Uh, get back up into positions. What was it like just battling with uh, Scott and and uh, Edwards there? Yeah, I mean, really towards the end, I felt like I was a little bit better than them. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit better. I was able to kind of roll the corner a little bit better, but I just was having trouble making the pass or getting up to them. And they pit like a lap or so early. So, I mean, I don't know really exactly how big tires mattered here. So, I just kind of, I mean, it may have had maybe a slight difference in the first few laps. But, like, I just, I mean, really I was just trying to wait for an opportunity for, like, one of them to slip up or something. And it happened twice. One of them when Jeffrey tried to go low on Philip Scott and about wrecked all off a of three and then a couple laps later when Jeffrey looked low on Philip and Philip got high and Bill Edwards stalled out and that I knew right there that was my only chance I had of getting by Bill Edwards and yeah I mean I, <laughs> I just I, I sent it three there and I knew the risk definitely and I know like Bill and was probably not happy about me sending it but that was my only best shot I had at getting by him with the minor damage I had and just having that big of a run so I mean I took it and somehow some way I was able to make it and hold him off when he had some chances to get by me and we came away third after a bit of a sloppy performance next week is uh, the third leg of the tabletop trio triple uh, at uh, Talladega, where we will have uh, a Talladega double. We, we saw that at the season opener in Atlanta. We saw it uh, several weeks later at Daytona. And now we're going to see it at uh, Talladega. Um, close battle in points for you. Uh, what are you looking for at Talladega? Uh, I mean, nothing more than them to win on my home track. I mean, I've never won there on JCTV. I've, I mean, I mean, I don't know what else there is. Just freaking win. I mean, it's just like win or bust, really. I mean, I can just say F the points, really. Just go for the win or it's just a disappointment. It's my home track and I just, oh, I don't really care about second or whatever. I just want to freaking win there and just win there on a JCTV broadcast on my home track. All right, sponsor, shout-outs. Who gets it on for you? Well, I got to thank everyone at Radius Racing. Very, very long list of guys. Uh, I got to thank, uh, first of all, Traper Burns tonight. I got to thank him. I got to thank Jeffrey Armistead. I got to thank David and Justin Duran, Tristan Maher, Gamer Caldwell, Adam Kuhn. Dakota Knoll, and of course, you yourself, Josh Coppernoll, for you know being my teammate, even though you're commentating. I gotta thank those guys. I gotta thank C2 Graphics for being on my truck, and I just all I gotta thank really, and just gonna on today, guys, next week to see what happens. All right, congrats on your podium finish. See you next week at Talladega. Thank you. Michael Kruger, your third place finisher tonight. Uh, Brett, how about you with Jeffrey Armstead? Yep, I am here on pit road with uh, Jeffrey Armstead. Uh, Jeffrey, able to bring it home P2 tonight. Really seemed like you maybe had the best long run truck in the field. What more did you need at the end to possibly get to Bronson and have a chance at the win? Yeah, I don't I don't know what else really could have happened there at the end. I was I was just chatting with Bronson. He said he killed the wall right before his second stop. So um if that had happened earlier or if I'd been able to get around some of the uh you know, given we went green the whole way, if I could have gotten around a few trucks a little faster, maybe gotten on and off pit road a little bit better, um, on my first stop, you know, that could have been the difference, but you know, he, he had a massive lead anyway. He deserved to win that race and um 
you know, there were maybe a couple of things I could have done getting around trucks earlier, like I said, but um, it was going to be really tough to catch him. I mean, he he rightfully built up a massive lead, and when you build up massive leads, that gives you a lot of um, cushion if something's to happen, and it played out perfectly for him. Yeah, and all night long, you were consistent. I think you were the only truck in the top five that didn't knock down the wall at one point or another. How were you able to keep it so consistent all night long, just hit the marks lap after lap? Um, I was trying to, well, I only got a couple laps of practice. I think I literally joined at like 8.04 or something. Um, so just kind of like was learning a bit about the limits of the track. Um, I've only run a couple of races here, but one of those was in the Indy car. So, you know, I know with the Indy car, you don't want to touch the walls at all. And um, so I was just, you know, keeping that in the back of my mind, making sure I could back up the corners enough to where I wasn't pushing as tight coming off. And I, I saw, you know, after the first five or laps, five or so laps of a run, that would start happening to other people. I could start seeing them hit the wall and just made sure that I was, you know, smooth in, smooth out as much as I could. And if I thought I was going to hit the wall, I would throttle back a little bit earlier than I probably needed to, but just wanted to be safe because, you know, error is so important. And if you get that damage, it's going to be really tough to, to make it work. So um, I felt I felt really comfortable in three. That was probably my best turn. Um, and it took me a little while to, to really nail um, two and four. And finally, I think that, that last battle, you know, we had a great battle there for a second for a while. Um, that was when I kind of finally figured out how to get through two to get those runs I needed into three. Um, and turn one was, you know, that was really tough. I could tell for everybody all night that it was it was tough getting in and out of there. Um, but yeah, you know, I was just backing up my corners as much as I could without giving up too much time and making sure that, you know, I had I had the room I needed coming off those corners. Yeah, and then next week here, doubleheader at Dega. I don't know if you're going to be able to make that, but I know tomorrow night, uh, starting the playoffs in the slide job racing league at Kansas, how are you going to try to carry the momentum from tonight into tomorrow trying to as you try to go for the championship in slide job? Well, uh, if I can keep it off the wall, that'll be a good step one. Um, I know, you know people like to run the high side there, and when you run high, you're always close to the wall. But, uh, you know, it's, it's just good to get some seat time. Uh, usually... I usually only have Tuesdays, and it's it's load into the slide job session, get my hour of practice, and then go. Uh, I don't I don't really get a ton of time to to run in general, uh, whether it's officials or other leagues, including you know the plethora of JCTV leagues that I show up in every now and then. Um, but yeah, you know, just getting some seat time, it, it keeps you fresh regardless of what you're in. I know not a lot of the, this track will necessarily carry over to Kansas. I know the truck itself won't carry over too much, but um, it's just kind of good to to have those limits of, of a car and a track uh, fresh in my mind, and we'll see what we can go apply tomorrow night. Yeah, and last but not least, uh, any shout outs? Who gets it done for you on that number fourteen truck? Um, yeah, you know, before I do that, I just want to give a shout out to all those guys that that we were racing for for second. That was Mikey, Bill Edwards, Philip Scott. Um, that was a crazy battle. Um, I got into Phil a little bit. You know, he apologized saying he was me or driving. I felt like I got in, got in a little bit too high when I got under him. And, um, you know, Bill was, was right there. And all of them did a good job of what I felt like was racing really hard with a lot of respect and, you know, not doing anything to cause caution. Because, you know, that race went caution-free. I like caution-free races and <laughs> we're able to keep it that way. Yeah, so. Um, but, yeah, you know, I always got to thank all the guys um, within SBLD. Uh, obviously, you, Brett, and then we've we've got you know Brian, Oscar, Dalton, um, Mikey races with us. Uh, you know all, all of our teammates there. Um, we've got a good group of guys, and it's it's also fun to to jump in this league. And uh, I didn't really get to do too much of a showing last week because I got wrecked on lap one. But it was good to to jump in here and and race with a lot of guys that were plenty of fast and and race with a ton of respect too. Yeah, and uh, congrats on the second place finish, Jeffrey. I look forward to hopefully talking to you again in this league. Um, look forward to racing with you tomorrow night. Uh, have a great night, and I believe Josh is right now in victory lane with our race winner, Bronson yeah, Thanks, guys. And yes, I am here with your race winner, Bronson Stafford. Uh, you did a really good job controlling this race right from the get go. And, uh, uh, a couple of drivers mentioned how you had uh, some damage. Uh, it was something that we didn't even catch for quite the while uh, until Brett noticed it. Um, but I mean, just you know, controlling this race, getting out to such a huge lead, 
uh, walk us through um, how you were able to do that. Um, honestly, just getting the lead on lap one, and uh, I think it was Bill and Mir got stuck side by side. Um, so I was able to break the draft. Once you break the draft here, it's it's so hard to to get back close to the guy in front of you just with dirty air and how how small the groove stays in the corners. It's hard to like move around and, and get out of it for the corner, and then you want it on the straight. So it's just getting the clean air was a big big thing, and then. Um, was lucky that fuel burn was actually much lower than projected and just being able to do 20 40s and then to the end without having to save or anything so it was like uh just just really easy to just split into dead thirds for you know keep the tires as as samey as possible mentioned uh <clears throat> the wall contact and once you had contact with the wall just before your second pit stop uh, how much of a difference was that affecting the truck? Uh, it was a lot slower. Um, I was, I think I was doing 52 sevens when I was doing 52 twos and threes. So it, it hurt it pretty bad. I'm quite thankful I had the gap after the second round of pit stops or that race would not have been won at all. Um, if they got to the draft, they were going to blow by me. I think I was like three miles an hour down entering turn three. I was only doing about 173, 174 when all race long you could do about like 77 to 180 on your own. So um, it, it hurt a lot more on the straights than anything, but in the corners I was able to just flat foot it at, uh, pretty much on both ends besides turn one. So it, it made it a little bit better, but if they got close in the draft I would not have been able to do anything. <laughs> Uh, not sure about the point situation. Brett was trying to uh, figure out the points. We believe you have the points lead or very, very close uh, to Michael Kruger for that. Uh, we do have the Talladega doubleheader next week. Um, what's what's your thoughts going into that with the points gap as close as it is? Uh, honestly, I haven't really looked at points too too much it's just kind of been running races um as best as we can obviously last week really really hurt but um dega should be pretty good i think we should have a solid team showing for dega as well so we'll be able to kind of maybe do the same things we did at daytona as a team where we we had lorello with us and whatnot um i'm i don't think he's gonna be there next week though he might be i don't know but i think we should have uh, a couple of us for dega next week and be able to at least hopefully get one of the guys on the team a win, if not um, as long as we don't just wreck, you know. Sponsor shout out to get to Doug for your winning truck. Ah, the whole Sky Motorsports team brought a really good truck this week. Um, I mean, Mir put it on pole to start the race, too. Uh, finished, I think. They still got a top 10 out of it. Mike uh, Mike had a kind of a rough day with damage, but he had speed when he, when he wasn't damaged, so that was good. Um, and obviously, Garrett, Mikey, putting on the league. Should we throw in sponsorship for it and you guys broadcasting uh, broadcasting the league? It, it It's always fun to go back and rewatch it and see what happened throughout the rest of the field. There are little things that, you know, even as drivers we miss. So good job on, on for that, guys. And uh, excited for the rest of the season. There's a lot of good tracks coming up. All righty. Congrats on the race win, and we'll see you next week. Tell it yeah, thanks, guys. That was race winner, Bronson Stafford, here in the Boston South. You know, sometimes speaking is so hard. Boston Sauce Party at the Brickyard. We'll go with that. <clears throat> and uh, once again, uh, Boston Sauce Party. It is Saturday, April 27th, and Sunday, April 28th at the Harpoon Brewing in Boston, Massachusetts. Sample and bring home the best hot sauces from more than 20 of the best hot sauce makers in the country. Tickets are going fast. Get them now. BostonSauceParty.com Brett was a uh, another great race. Caution free. Um, 
What'd you think of this one? Uh, it was a great race. Uh, always good seeing races go green. I love seeing long green flag runs. It's really, f I know that all the drivers appreciate it. It's a lot more fun to drive races where it's green like this. Um, it really becomes a driver's race then. You don't have really any... You don't have as much of the people playing strategy. I mean, I like, I like strategy because I'm not good enough usually to win these races, but um, <laughs> the... It was a lot of fun. Uh, Indi I, lo I love Indianapolis. I really wish we'd go there in more leagues. Um, that's a track I'd love to see on the BSR schedule. Uh, Cam, if you're listening, do it. Um, I think we'd be a lot cleaner there than we'd be at, uh, let's say, uh, Richmond, for example. Uh, <laughs> or the but IRP. Yeah, or IRP, yeah. Uh, I love IRP, though, too. I would IRPs. love to go back to IRP as well. It's a great track. But... Uh, I, I hope we f can figure something out to make the short track product better in that league. Because uh, that's just... I love racing short tracks in the truck. And unfortunately, it's just a lot of times a struggle keeping it clean. But it happens. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun tonight. Looking forward to future races. And uh, I don't think I'll be here with you next week because I got some other stuff going on. But looking forward to the next time I'm in the booth here in TNR with you. Which I believe will be the race after that. Which is at... Bristol, so that'll be fun. So, yeah. Indeed, it will be. Talladega is going to be fun. For sure, as well. Yeah, I wish I could be there. I, you, know, you know I love Talladega. Oh, yeah. It, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, that's going to do it for us here at uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Big shout out to the drivers. The Edmund team and you guys, the fans, uh, we really appreciate it. This wouldn't be possible without you guys. And uh, on behalf of Brett Bennett, the entire outstanding crew here at JCTV, want to say thank you. Have a great night. Stay safe. And uh, enjoy your Tuesday tomorrow. Take care.